we're on our SharePoint Online site and we're talking about uh, usability and forms etiquette and some things you can do with your forms to make them more user friendly for your users. So let's talk about setting required fields and other field validation on your fields. And I'm going to go into this contracts library and I'm going to show you where you would set that up. So if we go into our library settings, we'll scroll down here, you can see all of the columns in my list. And then you, there's also a column here required. So the ones that have a check mark by them are required. So these fields are required when the user submits the form. To set that up, uh, we'll just click into the customer name so you can kind of see how that's set up. It's, it's just a entry in the, the list here. You can say yes or no required that this column contains information. And we've, you can see we've done that for a couple of fields here. The next thing I want to show you is how to set a default value. And let's go in. I think we've got one set up here on our effective date. So, yeah, so we have set a default value here of today's date. I've chosen today's date. You could also set an actual specific date if you want to. But in this case, you know, let's say a person is uploading the contract and Typically, they upload it the same day they get it signed. So by defaulting to today's date, that just is one less field that they have to enter when they're going through and filling out the form. Now, they can always change that. This is just a default value. They can change it to whatever they want. So if they are late getting their contract entered, they can, they can change the date, backdate it to whatever date it was. So that's uh, setting default values. Let's actually look at a form that I have modified to, uh, to handle some of the things that we have talked about. So I have a contracts library and I am going to just browse and upload a new file so we can see what the form looks like. All right, so I'm just gonna choose a contract here, say okay, click okay. All right, so you can see this form doesn't look like your typical out-of-the-box SharePoint form. I've added some grouping so it kind of segregates the, the fields a little bit to make it easier to read. Now this is this is a really short form and not very many fields, so it you know might not be necessary in this case. But imagine if you had a really long list of fields that you wanted somebody to enter. It just breaks it up, uh, makes it a little bit more visually appealing and and gives them kind of an idea of what types of data they're entering in. So let's just enter a name. So since this field is required, I have to make an entry. You can see by the red asterisk there that it's required. Uh, these other fields aren't required, so I'll just skip those. You can see the effective date did populate with today's date. We'll just leave it at that. And, we'll, and we've made terms required also. So we'll just choose a term. We'll say check in. All right, so you notice that after the form was submitted, it brought me back to this thank you page with just some text here saying your form has been submitted. Thank you. Link back to the home page. This is not default behavior from SharePoint. Typically, it will just redirect you back to the list or library where your submission was made. And so this is just a little bit more user friendly, gives the user an idea that their form has been submitted and that everything is okay. So how did I do that? Well, let's go look at, when I click on this add new contract link, there's a parameter in the query string that you can set that will do a redirect. So I'm just gonna copy the URL here and paste it make this a little bigger so you can see it, so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is the URL, the link that, that I went to uh, to upload my new file. And then you can see there's a bunch of parameters. Well, one of those parameters is a source parameter. And I'm just gonna highlight this so that you can see it a little bit better. Make it red. So whatever I 
put behind this source parameter, whatever URL I put here, is where it's gonna redirect me. And it looks a little funny because it's just URL encoded, but when you uh, when it translates that, it turns it into the actual link, so with your slashes and, and periods and stuff. So you can see that it's taken me to my thank you.aspx page. So by just appending that into the query string, you can perform a redirect to any page that you want.